Badgers concluded an undefeated home season yesterday, knocking off the Wisconsin Badgers 78-70. Purdue finishing 16-0 this season at Mackey Arena, 28-3 overall, 17-3 in the Big Ten, winning the regular season conference championship by three games for the second straight season. Now the Boilermakers will turn their attention to the Big Ten tournament. Well, they'll take on the 8-9 winner on the Thursday's game uh, on Friday at noon. It'll be Michigan State or Minnesota to take on the Boilermakers at the Target Center in Minneapolis. Filling in tonight for Rob Blackman, I'm Tim Newton. We're going to have the coach with us in just a couple of minutes as the Boilermakers get ready for postseason play. First, the Big Ten tournament, and then, of course, the big dance coming next week. We're on the Purdue Athletics site on all the social media channels, so if you're watching along on Facebook, let us know where you're watching from tonight. We will have the coach with us right after this. It is the Matt Painter Show, presented by Jemco on the Purdue Global Sports Network, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. I'd like to see an aggressive Chucky Hepburn off the tip. Lance Jones has that quick release for Stephen Crowell. Edie shows a little bit off the catch. A.J. Storr like he did against Edie at the Cole Center, and this time he's wiped out. Jones wants to fire. Oh! Goodness, fake from Crowell. Pleasant in the corner. No. Good rotation by Purdue there. Zach Eady flying out. He got a hand up and contested that look in the corner. And Royer in a hurry for two. Eady. Race for impact. Two and a foul. Hook, but he is getting downhill. Nolan Winter. He's going to be a good player, but but he certainly needs some time in the strength conditioning program. And this is just a big time move. They have given Ilber that three a couple of times. Break that speed. Oh, wow. Jones. 16 by 13. And Wall trying to skip it for Hepper, and it's intercepted. Eyes up. Lawyer got it. So much for that. And Purdue has just been lethal in the open court today. They've got their eyes up. They're hunting shots. And Fletcher Lawyer. Hoffman Renbord will go off the nasty spin. That was dazzling. It's going to be Purdue rotating and blocking out, but nobody finds Wall. Mason Gillis. Been there waiting for the names to get announced pregame, but he's got this in him. Oh, I think Indiana found out about that. That is true. High low. Really high. Smith the reload. Oh, Lawyer pump fake. Smith wants it. And got it. You give up a good one, and you get a great one there. And off this offensive rebound, you've got Wisconsin in scramble mode. Good closeout by John Blackwell. You're great guard. You got, you know, yeah, I I just saying. Something about that. That burns down. Yeah, he's... Jones for three. That might be it. Welcome back to the Matt Painter Show presented by Jemco. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Jemco Con Constructors is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Matt Painter Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Jemco Constructors, Boiler Up. Well, Matt, first of all, before we get into questions, congratulations. It has been a tremendous regular season, and I think that we never take for granted when you play in one of the toughest, if not the toughest, conferences in the country to win a Big Ten championship is a big deal. Yeah, no, no question about it. And any time you talk to coaches, that you know they'll say that. You know, when you have to play 20 games, you know, 10 home, 10, 10 away, there's, there's nowhere to really hide. You know, you, you have to be able to go into some – really tough venues and be able to get wins and you know coach katie's recipe for success was win all your home games and if you split the road games yeah you're going to have a chance it doesn't guarantee it yeah. but you know this year you know you know we were able to win all of our home games and then obviously go you know seven and three and it just we were a little bit better than that and, and anytime you're a little bit better than that you win the league by three games, right? Like yeah. in some years it'd be different. Like when it was 18 games, we've won, we've went 15 and three twice when it's been 18 games and not won it. Yeah. And that's what, you know, you want to throw that recipe <laughs> <laughs> out the window. But for the most part, you know, for our guys, you know, being able to, you know, hold tight. Like we, you know, we're down eight against Minnesota at home. Obviously we're up eight against Northwestern at home. And that ends up going in. I think that goes into overtime, like our game at uh, Northwestern also. Obviously, the only team that just, you know, really handled us was Nebraska. Yeah. You know, Nebraska was they, – they were hot that day. 
Um, we turn the ball over too much, and that kind of gets to those. As a coach, you've got to be able to try to take in some of the success while you're doing it because the only thing you want to think about is the three losses, which right. is crazy, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. it's crazy, but that's yeah. the way – that's the way the mind works. But, um, no, just proud of our guys to be able to take care of, you know, our home court advantage, which obviously we have a huge one, and then being able to, to battle on the road. And obviously we were undefeated in our neutral games in non-conference. Well, I think we got a sense of the competitiveness of this basketball team. And I don't think it was in question to begin with, but you go to Illinois last Tuesday night. You've already got at least a share of the conference championship clinched. Um, a raucous, one might say a vile crowd in Champaign on Tuesday night, and yet you were able to come from behind and win that game. I thought that might have been the most impressive win of the season. Yeah, that was our best win of the season. You know, that meant the most to us, more than anything. I mean, obviously, we'd already clinched at least a tie, but to be able to play the team that, you know, was fighting probably for the most because now they're trying to get uh, – that would have been the biggest win, you know, for them, but then it would have kept them in the Big Ten race. And so our guys, the way we were – the way we played, the way we came back, the way we shot the basketball, you know, kept our poise – um, you know, down the stretch in that game, going eight for ten from three. Uh, that, that was a huge win because they're good. You know, you saw what they turned around and, and went to Iowa and, and, you know, had Iowa down, you know, in the 20s, you know, in, in the first half. But they are a very, very good team. That team can go to a Final Four. And, they, you know, they got some explosive athletes. They got some guys that can score the basketball. So that was a huge win. I want to talk a little bit more about the seniors later in the show, but we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Braden Smith and what he did, not just throughout the basketball game, but the shot he hit with about 20 seconds to play. That, that was a pretty uncommon thing for somebody to be able to do. Yeah, and it was, it was a smart thing for Brad Underwood to do in terms of getting to that timeout because in that situation, when, when time is up against them, they went and doubled and trapped the basketball. But we want to hold the basketball because we want to run that whole time. So we want to run that. So now anytime someone comes and presses you or whatever, the number one thing to do is break it and go score. Well, you break it and go score and you give them more time when they're right. down. That's what they want. So now as they came and trap us and you get out of that trap, and then they go back to it again. They did it about three times, if I got it correctly. And so, you know, we held off and now we're at about 10 seconds. And then right as I, that happened, I was like, Brayden, you got to get us one here. I was meaning kind of more breaking down, you, right, know, you right. know, create for your teammates. And then, you know, he called for that ball screen and made that shot. It was just, it was just a huge shot, man. That was, that was a big-time shot. Well, and he said as soon as the defender just turned his eyes just a second, that gave him enough of a space to, to release that three. Yeah, you know, great ones can manipulate the game with their eyes. You know, and, and sometimes when you hear that statement, most people would think that's kind of a crazy statement. Well, it's, it's not crazy to them. You know what I mean? It's crazy to us because we're average. You know, he's not average. He can manipulate the game, and he really uses his eyes to throw people off and the way he can pass the basketball. And obviously, he, you know, he broke the record for the most assists in a season. He's the leader in assists in conference games in, in our conference. So, like, um, you know, he, he's been great for us. But there, there's no question when um, he's in that situation because Terrence Shannon's real. You know, like he can really, really guard people. He can really hawk the basketball. So for him to be able to make that play is one thing, but to make that play on Terrence is, is huge. You know, you don't take playing for at home for granted because you've got to you've got to still go out and win the games. But to win big games like that on the road, to me, those games define your season. No question. No, no question. That, that was a defining game for us because, you know, you just go through a lot of emotions of, of trying to win and put yourself in those type of positions, and then you are able to beat Michigan State. So, like, for us at the end here has been huge because our last three games were all three NCAA, you know, caliber teams, tournament teams. And so to be able to get Michigan State and then get Illinois, then obviously, you know, it's, it's the only time we've played where, you know, you look at it in terms of NCAA, in terms of seeding, in terms of Big Ten, in terms of Big Ten seeding, nothing mattered, you know, right. against Wisconsin. Yeah. And that, something matters because you have pride. It's senior night. You want to win. But in those lines, like – you know, you're going to Indianapolis and you're at one seed no matter what happens. It's like going to the Big Ten tournament. Like, we've never been in this position where it's like, okay, this is undoubtedly going to be your seed. I thought last year we, we were able to get that last one seed, yeah. you know, by going. We get beat in the first round. We're not a one seed. We're a two seed. Yeah. So, like, there's a lot to play for in terms of your pride and senior night and wanting to have um, an undefeated home season that year. But in terms of those things that really matter, like nothing. So, like, for our guys to be able to pull that victory out, um, you know, that was big, too. All right. We need to take a break. It's the Matt Painter Show presented by Jemco on the Purdue Global Sports Network. And this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. 
in the country, nearly 10 per game. Get it back to the big man, working on Hawkins, and he floats it up and in. Transition will be key. Matt Painter really preached to his team, keeping Illinois out, and then you can just dump it down and let Edie go to work. Well, they're going to go to Nicolo Moretti, redshirt freshman guard, in his place. Edie inside, and that's just too pretty. Perimeter, and Edie's got a guard there as well. Look at the way that Hawkins is just giving ground these bigger Illinois guards. Deep touch, too deep. Zach Eady rocks the rim. Ground. And then when you, you let Eady catch this here, I mean, he's once again right at the charge arc. It's one dribble. He's rolling on Coleman Hawkins. And Hawkins, Stephen, he, he's fighting for his life. Ground and Eady misses. Tapped around. Tracked down by Morton. Jones open three. He buries it. It's going to be the game. Yep. I mean, that, that is going to be the game. Smith bounces oh, it perfectly fight. delivered for Eady. Braden Smith, just a simple ball screen. You're popping out Mason Gillis and Marcus Damask. He, he, he's a little bit concerned there about Lance Jones as a shooter, rightfully. But Purdue is doing so good at getting him by himself. Like oh, what a play. Beautiful lob inside and Edie with the easy slam. And that's what you're trying to do for the rest of the game. Doubled Edie immediately. Smith is left open. Cash from three. In for Edie. Outside lawyer a three. Bottom. Post touch, Edie against Hawkins. Just bodies him up. Can't hit. Oh, the tip in. Kaufman ran to count it and a foul. Got the physicality and the size to, to deal with some of the problems Damask can give you. As we say that, oh, what a block. Edie erases it. And the trailer, Gillis, drills the three. Purdue in front for the first time tonight. And that never happened. Shoot that, he's taking this. Shannon, give and go. Hawkins, block! Great block! Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Let's check in on Facebook. We have Ira tonight from Swamico, Wisconsin. Debbie is in Venice, Florida. Uh, Ken from Pinehurst, North Carolina. Marlene's in Seven Mile, Ohio. I have no idea where Seven Mile, Ohio is. Have I ever been on a recruiting trip through Seven no, Mile? No. Okay. Uh, Chris uh, is in Cicero, Indiana. Uh, we got I a lot. I haven't of, been to Cicero either uh, for recruiting. Uh, there you go. Uh, we got a lot of boiler ups here. Jeff is in Cape Coral, Florida, and uh, John is in Littlestown, and we got Lockport, Illinois, Danville, Charlotte, North Carolina, Fort Wayne, and uh, Lafayette. So thanks again go. for tuning in, and thanks for being here with us all season long. Boilermakers will start Big Ten tournament play, by the way, Friday. That will be a noon Eastern time tip-off against either Michigan State or Minnesota. Rob and Bobby will be on the air for that one starting at 11 a.m. You know, we talked about that you didn't necessarily have uh, a lot. I'll say you, you had something to play for, and it was pride uh, yesterday, but there was also a statistical thing that hadn't been done for a long time, and, and I think it's worth mentioning. No team had won the Big Ten outright two years in a row since Ohio State back in 2006, 2007, until you did it this year. And it's the first time that a team has won the Big Ten back-to-back -back by three games or more since Indiana did it back in 75 and 76. Mm -hmm. And those, as we know, are some of the great teams in Big Ten history. So this team has etched its way into the record books. It still has more to write. But the chapters so far have been pretty good. Yeah, no, no question about it. And, and that's, you know, to be in that company, you know, with the last undefeated team in, in college basketball, you know, 1976 Indiana team, it's kind of like like when Zach is passing people on that conference record and, like, for rebounds and for, uh, for points. And, like, he doesn't know who he's passing. And, like, he doesn't yeah. realize that, you know, <laughs> who Kazi Russell is and, you know, who some of these guys that, you know, Walt Bellamy, like how great of players, how great of pros these, those guys were. And, you know, you look on those lists and you, and you see the guys that could score and rebound, just, just some of the greats. So, for us to be able to put ourselves in that category, and we were talking before we went on, like, you know, you know such great teams that we're more familiar with, like like a Fab Five or right. the Flying Illini when I was in high school coming into – coming into the college and, and those teams didn't do it so like when you look at the teams that you look up to and then they didn't accomplish you know some of those things and, and for us to be able to do that um in, in the 20 games is it makes it a little harder there's no there's no question about yeah. that you know it's i think it's the right thing for our league because you got to keep playing quality teams and the older coach in in when he first started there there wasn't any of those metrics 
yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, when you went to schedule, you know, it's Dick Vitale, you know, yelling Cupcake City, right? You know, <laughs> you got your wins and you got your confidence and then you played your hard Big Ten schedule. Well, now it's different. Like, you know, we played one of the hardest schedules in the yeah. country. Yeah. And I think by doing that, what Arizona does, what, what we do, yeah, Michigan State's always done it. Gonzaga does it. You know, you just – you schedule up, and now that gives you, a you know, a better chance, um, you know, to win in conference play. It doesn't guarantee anything, but you're just prepared. You're, you're not – and that's why I thought the Arkansas game for us in, in scheduling was so important for us. And it was important for us to lose. I, I, I like getting in there and, and getting that feeling when it doesn't matter. And, and so, like, you got to get guys to understand – you're not you're not trying to get minutes. You're not trying to get shots. You, you know you, you're competing to win games. You know you're you're laying it on the line. And when you lose yourself to the team and you do something, and you're competing that way, that's when collectively you're at your best. Eleven quad one wins this season, best in the country. Ten wins against teams that were ranked in the net top 25 at the time. And you finished it off yesterday with a 78-70 win over Wisconsin. Uh, the first time that you've swept Wisconsin in a two-game series since 2015-2016. So we know the Badgers are very consistent every year. And, again, uh, just a great way to cap off the regular season. Yeah, no question. And, and that, those are harder just because, you know, you don't play everybody, you know, twice every single season ex right. except for Indiana because we, we play our rivals. So when those stats come out, sometimes they're a hair misleading because you're not playing them twice every year. Yeah. But when you do, like, you know, it's just hard to win in the Kohl Center. It's hard to beat a team like Wisconsin, period, but it's really, really hard to win in the Kohl Center. But this year we were able to win there, and that, that, was a, that was a big deal. And that gave us the most wins of any opponent in the Kohl Center, which you got to take pride in because the places that are the toughest to win, if you can get some wins there, it's definitely going to help your confidence. Boilermakers 32-8 and eight in the Big Ten over the last two years. The next best team is Illinois at 25-15. and 15. So that shows what a dominating two-year run has this has been. You've talked about it too, Matt. It's, uh, you hear it all the time with a team that loses the Super Bowl or loses the World Series. They think now I get to get all the way, all this work to get back to where I was. Right. You know, you right. can't go back and play another Super Bowl next week. And for your team to have what happened in the tournament last year and get off the mat and do this, I think again makes it even more amazing. No question, because you, you know you want to fight to get back to where you were, and we're fighting to get back to be a little bit better than where we were. Even though you're a one seed, we're going to be a one seed. Um, our, our guys, you know, should be commended because they they have fought really hard. And they've had to deal with it. It's not 30 years ago. Like, the noise is there. Like, use it as motivation. Don't ignore it, you know. And, and also face adversity. You know, it's, you know, people have no idea about just getting up every day and having that goal and having that challenge and just staying with it and fighting with it. And, and people are poking at you. I mean, don't, don't look at that as a negative. Look at that as a positive and use it as a positive. All right, we'll be back in two minutes on the Matt Painter Show presented by Jemco on the Purdue Global Sports Network. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. What is on the line tonight for the Purdue Boilermakers is a share of the Big Ten title. First things first, you have to try to find a way to beat the Michigan State Spartans. You score the basketball, sprint back, okay? We get a rebound, we're gonna go have some fun on the other end, all right? Just keep spreading and go to the next play. But more than anything, guys, you have fought your ass off to put yourself in this position. Reward yourself. Braden Smith dances into another jumper. Kick out for Fletcher Lawyer 3. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the trophy to your 2024. 
four big main champions. For the athletics director, Mike Bobinski, and coach Gene Cady. Welcome back to the Matt Painter Show presented by Gemco. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. I'm falling behind. And I'm sorry we got so many people checking in tonight. I uh, hope I don't miss anybody, but I'm going to get down. Uh, Tampa, we mentioned Lafayette. Kirkland, Washington checking in. Uh, Vordingborg, Denmark is uh, staying up late to watch us tonight. We thank them for that. Bedford, Morristown, Tennessee, Austin, Texas, Seattle, Muncie. You you know that one uh, pretty go. well. There and Platte City, Missouri. We'll, we'll get a few more uh, in the next break. Uh, the 2023-24 Purdue basketball season is presented by Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Earn a degree you're proud of and employers respect. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Uh, well, uh, let's talk a little bit about your senior class because we had senior day yesterday. Uh, you had six seniors that you honored, and, and all of them with a little bit different path. And I'm going to start with your two walk-ons, although uh, Carson Barrett went on scholarship this year. Uh, but following in the footsteps of Dave, his, his father, who played with you, um, and a, a guy that wants, like his dad, to get into coaching. Uh, and, right. and a guy that could have played somewhere if he had wanted to play right. and get more minutes. Yeah, both of those guys, Chase and Carson, could have played, you know, and uh, they really worked hard on the game. That's what I talked about in my speech is that, like, a lot of times you kind of, you know, you kind of get through a year or two, and then you're like, ah, this is kind of where I'm at, and I'm going to be able to help the team, but I'm not going to. But those guys kept working. Those guys kept working on their game and um, putting in a lot of time and just, you know, the energy they, they brought and just being the scout team and being the other opponents, you know, guards. And uh, But they're both very knowledgeable. They know what's going on. They – they, they do more than just help our other guys and, and playing. It's like just, just being there and doing a lot of little things. You mentioned, you know, Carson wants to coach and, you know, following the footsteps of his dad. And, um, you know, he's going to be a really good coach. Like he's going to, you know, he, he's seen a lot, right? He's been around a lot of success, been around his dad. And so, like, you know, he, he'll do a fabulous job. I wish he didn't coach. I wish he <laughs> had a great life and got some Colts tickets and just, well, you know, had yeah. some fun. You know what I mean? But – Chase, you know, Chase could literally do anything you wanted to. Now, yeah. uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does. He, he could go into the engineering field, which right. is there. He could be a doctor. You know, he could be an attorney. He could coach basketball. Like, he, you know, Chase can do whatever he wants. It'll be interesting. I ask him, like, what he's going to do, and he always get a different answer. So, I'm, well, I'm, I'm done asking. I'm go. just going to wait and, right. and see what goes down. But both of those guys were fabulous. Uh, a guy that just came in here for one year but I think has had a huge impact, Lance Jones. And I think uh, you were looking – when you look at the portal, you're – you, the, the good news is you're not having to build out of the portal. You're able to fill a gap or exactly. fill a hole, uh, but you have to have the right fit. I think it's safe to say Lance Jones was the right fit for what you needed. Yeah, exactly. You know, he, he gave us from, from basketball standpoint, he gave us another ball handler, which we needed. He gave us some speed and some athleticism. And so just from that standpoint, you know, is what we needed. But his competitive spirit and the way he is, you know, how he goes about his business. He's competitive, but he has a good time, and he has a lot of fun. And we needed somebody like that with that kind of personality, you know, to help this group. We have a lot of guys that are workers and do their job, but we're, we're all kind of wired the same. And, um, you know, he, he, he gave us that punch. And uh, I think that's something that's really going to help us in tournament time. Well, and I think something that, that he found out early on when his dad passed away just at the start of the semester in the fall and the entire team went to the funeral, I think that showed him – this was not a transactional thing for him to just come in and be a basketball player and help. We, we talk about family all the time. I think he saw up close and personal, this is a family. Yeah, no question. You know, I, I think that foundation was, you know, laid by Coach Katie and just that basketball family that we've always had here at Purdue and, and, and trying to help people. And, um, you know, to have a loss like that at such a young age, you know, is, is really difficult because – you learn as you get older that you got to pick up the pieces and be there for other people. And as a young person, like being there for other people isn't quite there yet, right? Yeah, you're just yeah. not, you're not wired and mature in, in that point. And, you know, he had to be able to do that for his family and kind of keep plugging away and going to school and playing basketball and when, you know, you're hurting. And uh, so for our whole team to show up and his teammates to show up, you know, I know that meant a lot for, meant a lot to him. And, again, not only fitting in, but fitting in on the basketball floor because you needed somebody with athleticism. You needed somebody who can hit a three-point shot, and he checks all the boxes you needed to have checked. 
Yes, no question about it. And, you know, the, the kind of balance, you know, Braden, Fletch, you know, that mix right there w w was just perfect for our backcourt. And obviously, you know, we have big wings in, in Cam and Miles coming off the bench, Ethan Morton, like those guys. So, like, he just gave us, what you know, what we needed. And, uh, you know, that was huge. All right, we're going to hear more from Coach Painter when we return. It's the Matt Painter Show presented by Jemco on the Purdue Global Sports Network. And this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. You know, they've been, they've proven to be human at times and been knocked off. And Yeah, it's a put up or shut up moment for either side. Illinois Purdue tomorrow night. Who you got? Illinois at home. I kind of think that's where I'm at too. I think Illinois is going to be looking for some revenge. I think that the... The size and athleticism Illinois guards are going to give Purdue a little bit of trouble. And I think the versatility of Coleman Hawkins to pull Zachy D away from the basket. Purdue's defense has really fallen. They've gotten really stagnant. The Illinois defense is worse, don't get me wrong, but their offense is better. Yeah, I think Illinois wins this game. Is that crazy? Be down low against Hawkins, turns and dunks with authority. Okay, what's Coleman Hawkins going to do with it? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> exactly what we saw, right? Smith bounced it perfectly delivered for Needy. Braden Smith, his second assist. All right, so you got to understand good things are leading to that. We just got to finish that play, okay? When they take it away, he will find you, okay? But be ready to shoot that ball, okay? Be ready to shoot that basketball. Let's go. Pride, man. Pride, man. Go feel what's on your chest. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Illinois has made an adjustment, and they're doubling that post, and Purdue is making them pay for it. He triple time. Just execute. Where it comes from, though, is we get stopped. we got to load up then. This is a scramble. Everybody's scrambling. Who do I got? Whatever. No, I'm playing the ball. I'm reading. Good job. Purdue with a two-on-one. Lance Jones in the left baseline. Gets to Gillis a three on the way, and Purdue has the lead. Long. Rebounded by Brayden Smith. It was tipped by Lawyer, rebounded Braden Smith. Smith, hook, inside, knocked away, Edie's got it. Jones is open, splash! Triple time, Lance Jones! Take the shoot, a deep three, oh! A triple time, what a shot, Braden Smith! Is it with the Steph Curry, night night, a lion eye. Illinois is not going to foul, Illinois is not going to foul. Are gonna come on. Purdue Athletics would like to thank and recognize members of the Black and Gold Club who support Purdue Athletics through their sponsorship at the highest level. Black and Gold Club members include Indiana Packers, Molson Coors, Purdue Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, Rorman Automotive Group, and Wabash. Each are great partners of Purdue Athletics. Going back quickly to Facebook, uh, now Jared says you've been close to Hamilton Heights, or close to Cicero because yeah. of Hamilton Heights. Yes, I've all been right. there. Okay, all right. I, I, I missed that one. All right, Cherubusco. Uh, let's I've see. been to Cherubusco. Okay, uh, French Lick, Indiana. Butler, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I the home spoke of at Ethan a clinic Morton. in French Lick. What was the other one? Uh, Butler, Pennsylvania. I've been Obviously, there. you've been there a few times. Big Shot Bob's is the wing <laughs> place there. <laughs> All right. Uh, William is from Maryland, but in the audience tonight, uh, right over there. So thank you for that. And uh, we're going to try and get to as many as we can here. Boston, Indiana. Uh, Jasper, mm. Indiana. Warsaw, Crown Point, Wilkinson. Uh, Martinsville, and we'll start for the uh, time being on Wakarusa, Indiana. Go. I haven't right. been to. I've been to all those places. I've been to Wilkinson. All right, really? Where's Wilkinson? I I don't know. Is what's the, what's the wing place? In Wilkinson, and I haven't Wilkinson. been to Wilkinson, okay. so I can't right. give you right. a wing place. I got you. I got you. But right. uh, Ethan Morton was Butler, Pennsylvania, yep. and the wing place was Big Shot Bob's. Okay, all well, right. I think I got it right. I all think right. that's right. All right. I just thought maybe you'd have the wing place in all the cities that you've been around. No, no, I, I come a couple of them. Um, no, I, I don't know. Right. I lose names when it's the specialties and when it's not like uh, Understood. when they send you to. Understood. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Butler, Pennsylvania, and Ethan Morton, uh, 29 starts last year, different role this year. Um, I had Ethan in a class that I helped uh, run over at the at the business school, and he, we had Rafael Davis in, in the fall to, to talk. And those two talked, and, and Ethan told Rafael going, and he thought it might be his his hardest season. And I think it was because he knew his time was going to be limited. He was going to have to be productive when he was on the floor. Right. And he was going to have to stay positive. And I think, again, you can check all the boxes there. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's it's hard. Like when you go through the season that we did last year and, you know, Ethan was great for us and he started up until the end of the year and, you know, just, you know, defensive specialist, you know, a guy that understands the game. At one time this year he had an eight-to-one assist turnover ratio. It's kind of unheard yeah. of, right? Yeah. 
But, like, coming into that and being able to play that role with Lance, you know, coming in there, now you got to kind of figure out. And that's where, you know, he helps us coming in and defending, taking care of the basketball. But your role's limited. It's it's a much harder. And so he, he's been a fabulous teammate, and he helps out all those guys and really tries to help Cam. You know, Cam plays more than the other guys do and just trying to kind of help him through – really the nuances of guarding and understanding the little things of defending certain people and how things are different. You've talked to in the past about it's it's really difficult when you're playing two or three minutes at a time to, to make an impact sometimes. I mean, it's 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 going to have to maybe be a defensive deflection or you're not going to be able to get into the right. flow of the game offensively right. in that time. So you got to contribute what you can. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, and some of it for us and some of it for me is like really looking and dissecting, you know, our losses in the NCAA tournament. And, like, you got to be able to score 60 points. you got a top five offense in the country, and you can't score 60 points in the NCAA tournament. So now when you look through things, like I look through that lens of going to the Elite Eight against Tennessee, and we scored 99 points. Yeah. Like, you got to score the basketball. Like, you got to get – so some of the things, you know, Trey Kaufman as a low post scorer, you know, Cam Heidi's ability to shoot the basketball. Cam Heidi's really helped us because he's become a two-way player. Yeah. And that's where it's really magnified his role and helped us more than anything. But really looking at the offensive piece of it, you know, Mason coming in the game really changes things because he's different than Trey. Mason plays more than Trey even though he doesn't start. But then – he's able to really stretch things out for us. And we can really, when Mason comes in there, we can really stretch things out and give Zach a lot of room to operate, but also make people make a hard decision in terms of are you going to double him or not. You know, Mason's another guy who started a lot in his career and has come off the bench this year. Uh, but I, when I talked to him uh, last year about this time, he mentioned the fact that when he got hurt in high school, he said the only coach that consistently stayed to check on him and came in was Matt Painter. And he said that was right there, the bond that he knew that right. Purdue was the right choice for him. And he's a guy that certainly has paid off for you down the road. Yeah, I like going myself because I think you can see a lot of things when you go in and watch people, not just play the game, but also what people think of you. Like sometimes people, you know, you get recruited so hard, it, it, it's hard to stay grounded. And it's not as much as what you think and give an answers as what people think of you because what people think of you is normally how you treated them. And, and so, like, the managers, the people that – the guys on your team that don't play, um, you know, fans, it's like, you know, Zach Eady at Purdue, like he's kind of – he's the man of the people. Like, you know right. what I mean? Like he's yeah. staying afterwards. He signs autographs. He's got time for everybody. And that's the hardest thing to give. The hardest thing to give is, is, is to give your time to other people. Yeah. Um, and, and Mason was a guy that everybody gravitated to, and he played hard. And he had to play center in high school for his team, but you could just see – I liked watching him warm up. You could see he had a routine. You could see he put a lot of time into it. The guy that worked him out recruited me in college from Evansville. So Steve Bennett had been the high school coach there. He had worked him out. His former player was the head coach. And so, but he had called me and just told me, like, hey, man, I think he's good enough. I sent an assistant in there. The assistant was like, eh. And so a month later he calls me back and says, I'm, I'm telling you, I think he's, he's good enough. I sent the assistant back in there. Eh, just a little bit. So then I went and I was like, yeah, I, I think he's pretty good. I, I like him. <laughs> he's, so, he's pretty good. <laughs> and so, but like, he just gives you that combination. Like, think about other people in our league that are like him. There, there isn't a lot of people right. like him. You know right. what I mean? So he gives you that toughness. He plays hard. He works, but he's skilled. He's a really good offensive, efficient player. Like, you can take him out of things. If you do, you just gave Zachary a lot of space to play. Yeah. He's also one of those guys, Matt, right now when he shoots a three-point shot and misses, it surprises you. Right. Yeah, I mean, he shot that one at the beginning of the second half. I thought the guy was going to block it. Yeah. And then, like, he doesn't block it. And I'm like, well, there's no way that's going to go in. Yeah. And, and he makes it. Like, yeah. he just – but when he gets his feet set and he shoots things in rhythm, he, he works on his game so much and you watch him. That's the one thing. Like, you know, players want you to instill confidence in them. And you try to do that. You try to be positive. You try to be direct or whatever. But they, they instill confidence in you as a coach. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm just confident when he – you know, steps out on the court that if, you know, he gets a little bit of daylight, then, you know, he's going to make his shots. Yeah. All right, we're coming to you from Walk-Ons. It is the Matt Painter Show presented by Jemco on the Purdue Global Sports Network, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. I like to see an aggressive Chucky Hepburn off the tip. Lance Jones has that quick release. And Stephen Crowell, Edie shows a little bit. Off the catch, A.J. Storr like he did against Edie at the Kohl Center, and this time he's wiped out. 
Jones wants to fire. Oh, my goodness. Fake from Crowell. Closing in the corner. No. Good rotation by Purdue there. Zach Eady flying out. He got a hand up and contested that look in the corner. Lawyer in a hurry for two. Eady. Race for impact. Two and a foul. Hook, but he is getting downhill. Nolan Winter. He's going to be a good player, but but he certainly needs some time in the strength and conditioning program. And this is just a big-time move. They have given Ilber that three a couple of times. Break back speed. Oh, wow. 16 by 13. And Wall trying to skip it for Hepper, and it's intercepted. Eyes up. Lawyer got it. So much for that. And Purdue has just been lethal in the open court today. They've got their eyes up, they're hunting shots, and Fletcher Lawyer. Off and red ball to Off the nasty spin. That was dazzling. That's gotta be Purdue rotating and blocking out, but nobody finds Wall. Mason Gillis in there waiting for the names to get announced pre-game, but he's got this in him. Well, I think Indiana found out about that. That is true. High low. Really high. Smith the reload. Oh, Lawyer pump fake. Smith wants it. And got it. You give up a good one, and you get a great one there. And off this offensive rebound, you've got Wisconsin in scramble mode. Good closeout by John Blackwell. You're great guard. You got, you know, yeah, no, I definitely just say something about that. That burns down. Yeah, he's... Jones for three. That might be it. I like to see an aggressive Chucky Hepburn off the tip. Welcome back to the Matt Painter Show presented by Jemco. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. It's time for the Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Jaden Ivey averaging 28 minutes a game with the Pistons. 15.4 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3.6 assists in Season 2. Travion Williams playing in Germany had two double-doubles last week. He's averaging 14.9 points and 8.5 and rebounds, along with 3.5 assists a game. Carson Edwards also in Germany, just over 11 points and under two assists, shooting 90% from the free throw line. And Jawan Johnson's playing in Israel. He's averaging just under 18 points and seven rebounds a game. And, Matt, it's a segue into, I think, the next pro for the Boilermakers, and that is Zach Eady, who is certainly going to be playing in the NBA at this time next season. I had a chance. You brought him over on his official visit because he was looking at possibly going into business school. And he, he and his mom came over. And I remember talking to you afterward and saying, what, what can you tell me about this guy? And you said, you, you know, we think he's going to be a good player in time. Mm -hmm. We think he's a little bit more flexible version of Isaac Haas. If I had pulled you aside and said, that guy is going to be the two-time national player of the year, what size straight jacket would you have <laughs> fitted me for at that point? Yeah, no question. Just, you know, just because you got to understand, like, he didn't have stats. Like, think about any time you, you sign guys. You're like, oh, this guy averaged 24, 12 rebounds. Like, you know, it's high school, right? How in the hell can't you do it if you're a yeah, Big Ten player? Yeah. Like, But he played behind Mark Williams at IMG, who went to Duke, who now plays for the Charlotte Hornets, who's the 15th, 16th pick of the draft. The year before, the best big at IMG was Baycott, who's been in college right. a long time. So yeah, Baycott yeah. was the best one. He was on, like, the fourth or fifth team. you got to understand that those big academies, they have seven or eight teams. So, like, it's, it's things are moving fast. Yeah, There's a lot yeah. of kids there. I mean, a lot of kids. And, you know, for him, he needed to play against Mark every day in practice. But yeah. with that, that bruises the ego a little bit because you don't have any stats. You're like, well, how, if you go see him, like, you go see him play, you might not play. Yeah. Like, you might play five minutes, you might play eight minutes, you just might not. And so um, that was the tough piece because you just didn't see him versus live competition very much at yeah. all. But you saw the footwork, you saw the hands, obviously elite size. And, um, you know, just wanted to be a player. The thing that he had that was different was when you just haven't played, like, you, you don't have bad habits. Mm. You don't have any habits, right? right? You're right. just you're, – you're forming clay. Like, you're just starting. And so, like, I played in a third-grade league when I was a kindergartner. And so my dad would – you know, they never could put your name on the team, but my dad just put me on the team and played me. And so, like, that was like, you know, it's what attorneys do. They find loopholes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I played in a third-grade league for four years. So he literally – I had more 
experience as a third grader in the third grade league than he had coming to Purdue. So if you look at it that way, you're like, whoa, like, so why wouldn't he get better? So for his years, he's really a middle schooler right now, yeah. you know, in terms of his years of playing and organized basketball. And then his job, you know, he doesn't have to do everything on a basketball court. Yeah. You know, people have, you know, now that will change going forward. But he has proven if you see us switch ball screens and do some different things and moves his feet, they'll score on him every now and then. Like Tyler Wall scored on him around the basket or whatever. Right. But, the, you know, he, he just causes problems. You know, he, he just mixes things up. He causes problems. But he's really improved in all areas. Anything that you have him do that he struggles with, he gradually just gets better and improve. And I think a lot of the credit has to go to Brandon Brantley. I think he's done a great job um, with him, you know. And, and more than anything, just giving him time. You know, you know, Zach, somebody, you know, he's the last person to come out of, of, you know, the locker room from, like, showering and stuff. His mom's always the last person sitting there waiting for him. And he's just somebody, like, after a practice just takes forever. You know, Brandon waits for him. You know, Brandon, he goes up there, he watches film, he goes through things. Brandon, you know, is a truth teller. And, and he really hits him, you know, over the head with, with certain type of things and his discipline and being fundamentally sound. But they've just kind of worked together and collaborated and, um, you got the two-time national player of the year. Uh, usually, by the way, I don't dispense a lot of advice, but when you tell people you spent four years in third grade, make sure they know it was the basketball part. It was the basketball thing. part. It was the yeah. basketball part of it. Not yeah, because no right. way we could knock the Muncie <laughs> Public Schools. No way. There you go. All right, we'll have more with Coach Painter after this. It's the Matt Painter Show presented by Jemco on the Purdue Global Sports Network, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Buddy in the country, nearly 10 per game. Get it back to the big man, working on Hawkins, and he floats it up and in. Transition will be key. Matt Painter really preached to his team, keeping Illinois out, and then you can just dump it down and let Edie go to work. Well, they're going to go to Nicolo Moretti, redshirt freshman guard, in his place. Edie inside, and that's just too pretty. Perimeter, and Edie's got a guard there as well. Look at the way that Hawkins is just giving ground. These bigger Illinois guards. Deep touch, too deep. Zach Eady rocks the rim. Brown. And then when you, you let Eady catch this here, I mean, he's once again right at the charge arc. It's one dribble. He's rolling on Coleman Hawkins. And Hawkins, Stephen, he, he's fighting for his life. Brown and Eady misses. Tapped around. Tracked down by Morton. Jones, open three. He buries it. It's going to be the game. Yep. I mean, that, that is going to be the game. Smith bounce it. Oh, perfectly oh. delivered for Eady. Braden Smith, just a simple ball screen. You're popping out Mason Gillis and Marcus Damask. He, he, he's a little bit concerned there about Lance Jones as a shooter, rightfully. But Purdue is doing so good at getting him by himself. Oh, like what a play. Beautiful lob inside and Edie with the easy slam. And what you're trying to do for the rest of the game. Double Edie immediately. Smith is left open. Cash from three. In for Edie. Outside lawyer a three. Bottom. Post touch, Edie against Hawkins. Just bodies him up. Can't hit. Oh, the oh, tip wow. in. Kaufman ran to count it and a foul. Got the physicality and the size to, to deal with some of the problems Damas can give you. As we say that, oh, Randall, what a block. Edie erases it. And the trailer, Gillis, drills the three. Purdue in front for the first time tonight. And that never happened. Kaufman shooting that, but he's taking this. Shannon, give and go. Hawkins, blocked. Oh, great block. Edie, oh, he stares him down. And anybody in the Your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Matt Painter Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Jemco Constructors, Boiler Up. Uh, the Boilermakers will take on either Michigan State or Minnesota. We will talk about the Big Ten tournament here in just a second. I do want to ask one question, though, that we saw in the women's uh SEC championship yesterday there was a fight between LSU and mm -hmm. South Carolina I don't know if I've ever asked you this before in football you got the get back coach who makes sure everybody right right if something ever breaks out do you have a protocol of what you're supposed to do on the sideline or what you want to see done just the assistants make sure that they don't come on the on the court more than anything they'll let you go out there now as coaches to break things up because I right. think it makes sense so just the assistants get the players and then you know try to go out there and do the best you can without getting hit yourself. Without getting hit. Make yeah. sure you protect the face. Yeah. Um, obviously, the big uh, – all the eyes are going to be on what you do in the NCAA tournament. You understand that. But the competitive nature of college basketball, you're going up to try to win a tournament this week, starting with the, the Friday game 
Uh, Michigan State you saw once, Minnesota you saw once. Uh, either one of those teams, uh, again, a formidable opponent Correct. in your quarterfinal. Oh, no, no question. You get on a neutral court, and, you know, a lot of the things that come out, like with the possibility of playing Minnesota, and you're in Minnesota, but, like, if you look at Indiana and Purdue while we were in Indianapolis, there there wasn't that yeah. advantage. I don't know how what the numbers were on the women's side, but, like, we were always like, oh, man, this is going to really help us, and it, it just didn't. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, so it'll be interesting to see because – it's not something that's going to stay in Minnesota. It's always going to rotate. And but um, yeah, it's, it's just it's just different, right? You know, we didn't go to Minnesota. We didn't go to Michigan State. And obviously now playing them from a neutral standpoint. But it's a new season. You know, yeah. it's a new season. Anything can happen. You just got to lock into it. And we talked about before, just like getting that practice. So we we have that practice the day before, a half an hour after the game ends. So we're prepared for both people. Mm -hmm. It happens. Then you go into it. But I'm I'm a believer in this. Like the most important team's yours. Yep. You know, have your team yep. ready. You know, have them ready to go. Have them ready to compete and uh, go out there and lay it on the line. With the possibility again of playing three straight days, do you change anything rotation-wise, minutes-wise? You treat it like a normal basketball game. It depends on what happens. You know, if you you have some you know foul trouble, you have some injuries. Obviously, that speaks for itself. Like you're gonna you know dip into it a little bit more there. Where's the game? How's the game unfolding? You know, in, in terms of if you can put yourself in a, in a really good position. I've tried to play 10. It hasn't worked. Um, but, like, last night I did. You know, I did play 10. I, I, Miles got in there, and, you know, he deserves to play more. And that's what I – you know, it's crazy. You never have that where you feel bad about it. But, like, we have a team that, you know, you, you have guys that should play more, but you're stuck. You know, you, yeah. you, you got 200 minutes, and, and that's that. So, um, if it happens, and I feel very comfortable, you know, diving yeah. into our bench because we have some good players. Had the feeling listening to you all season that you really like this basketball team. How is it different from last year's team or the last few teams you've taken right. into the tournament? Well, we, we shot the ball much better this year than we did last year, and that just keeps people honest. Last year they they would literally not guard, you know, a couple guys like, like in our team and, like, back up off of people. And now, you know, I knew Fletcher Lawyer just watching him through the years would, would make an improvement there. You know, Braden shot the ball well, but he needed to, he needs to shoot more. And so, like, last night he didn't have a good shooting game. And, like, he needs to keep shooting. Like, he, he's, a, he's a really, really good shooter. And with that, you got someone like Mason Gillis. So, like, the guys that are going to shoot the basketball the most from the perimeter, you got to have those guys, you know, in the 40s. And we have with those three guys there, Lance is in the 30s. Um, and uh, he, he's really helped us in that area. But just that that's probably the, the most. I think we're, we're a little bit better defensively. Um, but offensively, see, anytime you can improve your offense, you're going to improve your defense. You just are because you're going to set your defense. Yeah. So when you take good shots, when you're on a great offensive rebounding team, you're going to make those shots. But the ones you miss, you've got a high percentage to get that ball back. But then the ones that they get, now they're good shots. So you haven't shocked anybody, and now you can set your defense. It's so important because they're so connected. Last question for you. You talked about it again yesterday during senior day, but you brought it up on different occasions. The fan support, not just this season, but really for the last decade plus, has been phenomenal. And, yes. and I think uh, you've, you've got a lot of Boilermaker Nation behind you, and, and hopefully that can carry out here in neutral floor and then wherever you go in the NCAA right. tournament. Yeah, you know, bring our fans, you know, a, a product that they want to, you know, cheer for. I always say we, you know, we got to do our part and play well and play well together and play hard, and that's something that a Purdue fan understands. They understand about playing team basketball, and they understand about playing hard and competing. Um, they want to win. They, you know, they, they want to win just like we want to win, but – um, but more than anything, that they also want to have the right type of guys that they can support. And so I think our staff has done a good job with that. Matt, congratulations on a great season. We look forward to a big run in March Thank and you. April. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. Final segment of the Matt Painter Show presented by Jemco is coming up. It's the Purdue Global Sports Network, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from their field. <laughs> on the line tonight for the Purdue Boilermakers is a share of the Big Ten title. First things first, you have to try to find a way to beat the Michigan State Spartans. You score the basketball, sprint back, okay? We get a rebound, we're going to go have some fun on the other end, all right? Just keep spreading and go to the next play. But more than anything, guys, you have fought your ass off to put yourself in this position. Reward yourself. Braden Smith dances into another jumper. Kick out for Fletcher Lawyer 3. Creates 
that's a catastrophe. Going in from the top works all night. You got to be ready for it and just score that basketball. Coaches, you got anything? Hey, this is, this is going to take two things, right? A special effort and a special level of concentration. That's it. Mason Gillis to Edie. Count the basket. And a foul. time so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week stop by walk-ons here in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Uh, Mr. Blackman always comes up with nuggets at the end usually my nuggets have barbecue sauce but I'll give it a shot anyway. Uh, one of the things one of the many points of pride with Purdue basketball over the years is that the Boilermakers have a winning record against every Big Ten team. Ohio State's the closest after the Buckeyes win this year that is a one game difference right now it's 94-93 in favor of Purdue. But Illinois, Purdue win, has the series 107-90. Indiana, 127-92. Iowa, 97-78. Maryland, 9-6. Michigan, 93-75. Michigan State, 76-56. Minnesota, 110-84. Nebraska, 20-7. Northwestern, 135-48. Penn State, 47-13. Rutgers, 16-6. And Wisconsin, 114-74. Wondering... What's the new uh, Pac-12, Pac, old Pac-12 teams coming in? Purdue four and one against Washington, three and four against USC, two and two against Oregon, just three and ten against UCLA. So that one's going to have to pick up. That's motivation for next year. Thanks to our engineer Wes Scott, our producer Ethan Sargent, video by McCarty Cummings. Again, filling in for Rob Blackman, Tim Newton. Thanks to the head coach. You've been listening to the Matt Painter Show on the Purdue Global Sports Network. On the